So this is Camp 4, which is like a communal campsite. So you just set up your tent and then you share a fire pit and picnic tables and then the bear boxes with other campers. And uh, if you're by yourself, it's really affordable. It's only six, six bucks a night uh, per person. Uh, Hobo Alley did a great video on how to actually get these campsites. They're all first come first serve basis, so no reservations, which means you can get into these even in the peak summertime. You just have to get here really early <laughs> and get in line. But uh, it's a really popular um, place for climbers, but anybody can, can use it. This is just a quick and quick and easy breakfast. Uh, chorizo and eggs with a little cotilla cheese and um, avocado. Hello friends, family, total strangers. Uh, this is my last Yosemite video, so part three. Uh, mostly talking about the seasons. Uh, it's a little talky, sorry. Uh, I should mention uh, that winter, I didn't really discuss winter as a season, which it's a great time to visit, it's just not for me because I don't have, I don't have a setup where I can be inside. You know, my van setup is all about being outside. So if you got a, a good inside space that you can heat, being there in the winter is a great time to be there. There's not that many people uh, in Yosemite in the winter. But all the high country is snowed in and you, you're limited in your trails. You're just going to be walking in the valley and there'll probably be snow on, on those trails too. But um, it's beautiful in the winter and yeah, there's almost no people. So winter is a possibility. But uh, let's talk about the uh, other seasons. So my next video I will talk about my where I currently am and my job that I'm doing. So uh, enjoy Yosemite. Uh, I think I'll start you off at uh, Mirror Lake. <laughs> no water in the lake currently. There's Half Dome, up close and personal. So, Mirror Lake is one of the most popular hikes and the tra uh, trails in the park. Um, however, it's only, I think, two miles round trip to Mirror Lake, and that's where everyone goes. They go to Mirror Lake and they stop, but the trail goes past it and does a loop. And when you come out here past the lake, there's hardly anybody out here. And, you know, in the summertime, it might be different. It definitely might be busier. but right now it's not and even in the summertime you could come out uh, early in the morning or or late in the evening before it gets dark and you're going to get this kind of solitude so you know you just have to look for it you have to look for it to get it here in yosemite but yeah this is this is awesome let's see if i can get the cliffs you probably can't see them oh well <laughs> oh here i got an idea there we go <laughs> yeah awesome uh so this is a this is a great trail to come on when you don't want to gain a lot of elevation and you just sp sp spent your a, a year's worth of uh hiking on your knees <laughs> doing one of the other trails like i did yesterday so this is a great mostly level trail and again once you're past the lake it's totally uh well the dry lake <laughs> once you're past the dry lake it's uh it's pretty deserted, so yeah, awesome. So I'm currently here in late November, and it can be snowing at this time of year, but it's not right now. The, the temperatures are pretty nice. It's uh, high's been low 60s, uh, the low's been high 20s. So it does get a little, little cold at night, but nothing I can't handle. 
and um, it's still busy. Like it's November 19th and it's still busy. <laughs> now it's a lot less, a lot less busy than it would be in June, July, or even April, May. Um, so it's, it's definitely less busy, but on the weekends, all the camping in the valley was sold out at one in the afternoon. <laughs> sold out at one in the afternoon in late November. Like, if that gives you any sort of perspective on just how busy Yosemite is. So I want to give you some tips on how to get away from people while, you, while you're here. So before I get into that, let's talk about the different seasons. So there are huge advantages to being here in November, late October into early November, that you can... Um, there's less people here, which is nice. And uh, the disadvantages are, it can be a little smoky. If, if, it, if there's fires, wildfires in the area, there can be some smoke, which there is some smoke, but not, not bad, much better than it is out in the valley. So um, it can be a little smoky. And the waterfalls, especially Yosemite Falls specifically, is not running. And all of the other waterfalls that are, are running are, are running a lot less than they would be in the spring and early summer. So it's all about trade-offs. Whatever season you come to Yosemite, you're trading off certain things. Um, if you come here in March, April, uh, even May, June, you're getting great waterfall season. And if you're in, you know, March, it's... March is probably my favorite month if the weather's right, but you have to watch the weather because it can be snowing, it can be crappy. But if, if the weather's good, March is a great month because there's the great, the waterfalls are running and there's not that many people. Once you get into April, May, June, uh, that's kind of when the, the waterfalls hit their peak generally is April, May, June. Um, there's a lot of people the weather can still be somewhat unpredictable in April and, and into May. Um, but it's a great time to be here. I mean, it's busy. It's busy, but it's not quite June, July, August. Like March, April, May are, are great months to be in Yosemite. Probably my favorite. Just for all the waterfalls are just fully flowing, going off. But what you're sacrificing in April, May, and June is the high country. Tioga Pass usually doesn't open until June, sometimes even July. So if you come in April, May, June, you probably won't be able to access Tioga Road um, going over Tioga Pass, which is a shame because it is spectacular up there. It's different. It's high Sierra country, uh, but really, really spectacular. So Really, the only times you can access the high country is July, August, and then depending on when snow starts. So right now through November. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to drive over Tioga Pass uh, tomorrow. But um, yeah, you can access you can access um, Tioga Pass in July. So I think July you can do day trips into Yosemite Valley early in the morning to avoid the crowds. You know, you can camp there, but it is, just keep in mind, in July and August, it's an absolute insanity. And you don't want to be driving in <laughs> in, the, in the, like, late morning, early afternoon. You want to come early in the morning when you're driving into the park um, in, in peak season. So, yeah, I mean, that's... That's really all I have to say about that. So spring's great for waterfalls. Summer and into fall is great for um, accessing the high country. So yeah, that's, that's that. I really think the best way to get some solitude in Yosemite is to start early and finish late. So 
when it comes down to it, most people aren't waking up at five in the morning. You know, they're, they're starting their hikes in the late morning, early afternoon. So that means that early morning time, you can get out and find solitude. So if you wake up with the sun, you know, that can be as early as 5 a.m. If you get, get up with the sun and go out there and do Yosemite Falls then, there's going to be hardly anybody there. You know, you can do Mirror Lake and there's going to be hardly anybody there. You can do the four mile trail and there'll be hardly anybody on it. I think that is the best way to combat the people crush here in Yosemite. I don't really have to worry about that too much because I'm here in the off season, which, well, kind of the off season. <laughs> Yosemite never really has an off season, really. I mean, it's sold out on the freaking weekend in November, but you know, the weekdays aren't bad. So starting early is a great way to to combat the crowds and also planning your hike out where you're doing it right before dusk coming back because a lot of people are already back at their camp cooking dinner. So I believe this is the Snow Creek uh, Spur Trail, which is off of the Valley Loop Trail. So I hiked up past uh, Mirror Lake and then just took this spur trail for about a half a mile to, to come up and get this this view. It's pretty pretty outstanding. Uh, so I'm not going up to the Mariposa Grove of the Sequoias, so I won't be able to show you that, but it's awesome. The Sequoias there are great. Um, definitely a lot of people, but a lot less than you'll see in the valley at least. And then I do want to talk briefly about the high country. Uh, I'm actually driving through it tomorrow, and, and I might film a little bit, but I think most of the footage that you'll see on this video is going to be from uh, when I was there uh, last July. Um, I, I drove over uh, Tioga Pass. The high country is amazing. Like, I really want to do some more backpacking and hiking. I really haven't done much up there. Um, but really spectacular drive. That's one of my favorite drives in America is driving over Tioga Pass. So Yosemite has so much to offer, so much to offer. So with just a little bit of pre-planning and research and showing up early, <laughs> you can really have a great time in Yosemite. Uh, you just have to understand that if you're an introvert and you don't like being around crowds of people, you have to find ways to find your solitude here. It's not just going to show up. It's not just going to be there. You have to you have to look hard to find it here in Yosemite, but you can find it. I, I've found it every trip I've been here, even in July. I've found serenity and solitude here in Yosemite. So 
yeah, that's pretty much my video. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. Thanks a bunch. Thank you.